The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone. This is Margo Hoffman from the Partnership for Excellence, and welcome to our first Third Thursday webinar of 2024. On behalf of the California Council for Excellence, the Mid-Atlantic Alliance for Performance Excellence, Performance Excellence Northwest, Sway, Oklahoma Quality Foundation, Quality New Mexico, and the Partnership for Excellence. We're excited to have you here today um, to hear from our presenter, um, John Clifford um, with Pegley I Pizza. I think it's exciting we have someone from a, a different industry. Um, just to let you know, um, there is a handout of John's presentation as, as well as the slides I'm sharing in the handout box of the control panel if you're interested in um, downloading them, and we're also recording this session, um, and you can look at it um, later for viewing. Our agenda for this morning is I have uh, a few announcements to make, um, and then we'll introduce our speaker. We'll have our session today, um, and then we'll have time for questions um, before we introduce our webinar for next month. If you do have a question, um, you can type it in the question box within the control panel, and I'll make sure that John um, knows that the question is there. You can also raise your hand and I can unmute your microphone, um, but we have quite a few attendees today, so we prefer if you put your questions in the question box. As a reminder, um, the seven programs that host these webinars have ongoing events throughout the year. Um, and we hope that you can participate in those events and just access the um, events pages for each of the programs um, to see what's coming up in the coming months. I'd also like to thank our organizational members. Um, our programs are primarily 5013C organizations and we're nonprofits, so we greatly appreciate the support that we get from our organizational members that allow us to work with organizations to improve their performance. I would now like to introduce uh, Theron Post from Performance Excellence Northwest, who's going to introduce our speaker. Uh, good morning, Margo, and thank you for the introduction, and thanks for all the things you do to get this um, webinar together for us. Um, PENW is proud uh, to have with us today one of our uh, key customers and, and core um, people in our community of excellence in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, just to correct Margo and, and to make sure that John gets his, his name right, it is actually Pagliacci Pizza. Uh, Pagliacci Pizza has two G's in it, if you're looking at the slides, um, and the G's are silent, so Pagliacci Pizza, and we're excited to have John here. Uh, J Pagliacci joined us about five years ago along their journey they had already really been on the road and doing some good stuff. They have just continued to excel and um, have been part of our community and, uh, and are doing uh, some, some great work. We're happy to have them today and um, sharing information about how they are working on um, comparisons. So with all of that, uh, I will hand it over um, to John Clifford. So welcome, John. Thank you, Theron. Thank you, Margo. Thanks to Lawrence for having me today. Um, <clears throat> I am I am excited to be presenting today. Um, it's it's funny, um, you know. I think Margo mentioned that you know we have unique um, unique industry presenting, and I certainly have felt um, when I've gone to examiner training or different conferences that that I've been in the kind of outskirts or, or the minority. You know, um, when I did the examiner training out in Maryland, I was able to find the one other food service person. So. Um, Shout out to you, Kate, um, today from Punch Pizza, um, the other other pizza person on the call. I went to a conference out at the uh, Tennessee um, Center for Performance Excellence, and the one other pizza group we were put together in the back of the room. Um, so it's nice to be able to present. I've learned a lot from a lot of different industries at all of the events that I've gone to in the Baldridge community. Um, I may not know all of the acronyms, um, <clears throat> but I'm able to pull things out of all of those lessons. And one thing that the owner of Pagliacci, um, Matt and I will sometimes joke about is when we're out and about and you get into a conversation and tell someone um, what we do and say, hey, we run a pizza company, then they're gonna immediately jump in and be like, oh, 
you run a pizza company, you know what you should do and <clears throat> start giving that unsolicited advice on, on how to run a business. Um, I assume that those of you in healthcare probably have not had that experience that just because we've been a patient doesn't mean that um, you're going to tell a doctor what to do. Um, those of you in government may actually have had that experience where people are telling you how to do your job. Um, and I'm bringing it up not to shame folks if you've ever told a restaurateur um, how to run their business, but my hope is that what I share today will be applicable because um, it is maybe a little bit um, easier access for, for everybody um, to that. So what I'm hoping to do today is tell a little bit about who Pagliacci is and how we came to find Baldridge. Um, talk about our experience after submitting our light application and then what we've done to use the feedback from the site visit from the feedback report. <clears throat> to narrow our focus um, through the lens of how we look at our results, how we use comparative data, and how that's helped us improve. Um, as Margot mentioned, um, happy to take questions. Uh, I'll defer to Margot on the timing. Go ahead and just throw those into chat if there's a good break and, and she wants to chime in. Otherwise, there'll definitely be time at the end um, as we go through. So who is Pagliacci? <clears throat> We are a Seattle company started in 1979. The name um, Pagliacci is actually in Italian, that means clowns. We were founded by a woman named Doreen. Her cousins helped her own, um, start the business. And as legend has it, all of the aunts and uncles and grandparents used to call her and her cousins uh, little, little Pagliacci, little clowns. And so that was a little bit of a nod to them. And <clears throat> She opened that picture there is the first um, Pagliacci there near the U District right by University of Washington. Um, our roots were what we call um, pizzerias. For us, that is a location that only you can only get pizza in the store, right? You can walk in, you can get slices. If you want to get a whole pie to dine in or to carry out, you can do that. And that's how we started for the first 20 some years of, of existence. It was in the 90s that we started delivery. We kept those two concepts separate <clears throat> so that you could go into a Pagliacci and get slices, but not delivery, or you could get delivery, but not slices. In 2010, we merged those two concepts. Um, we had a new store opening and we decided to try both um, in one spot and uh, it was very successful. It works really well for our customers, works really well for the business. So in the um, 13, 14 years since we've opened that store, we've switched and now we have just about all of our stores, all but one have that slice bar. We don't have pizzerias anymore. We have one lone outlying delivery kitchen that just doesn't have the space for us to, to put in a slice bar. So. Um, while it's been good for the business, it has complicated things for our employees and our managers, which um, has made it prime for our Baldry experience to figure out how to improve and, and go through. It's pizza, so we are a little bit irreverent. Um, and I know that's all relative. Um, in the Baldridge community, we're a lot irreverent. In the pizza community, not so much. Um, but we do like to have fun in our stores. Um, we do things tongue in cheek a lot of the time, but we don't compromise on service and quality. We really push, that was what Doreen founded the company on, saying, hey, I might not be able to know everything, but I do know if we give really good service to our customers and really good products, we're gonna be able to figure everything else out. We are still locally owned, so, um, the new ownership, uh, new is, is relative, uh, current ownership, uh, two partners, Matt and Pat, they they took over the business in the year 2000, and we have been um, growing since. We just opened our 26th location a couple weeks ago, <clears throat> which has had me making a lot more pizzas than usual um, out there. We have three of those 26 locations 
are on the University of Washington campus. So those ones are staffed and operated by University of Washington Housing Food Services. But as much as possible, we do treat those locations as if they are our own. So our regional supervision is going in there, meeting with managers, we're doing inspections, we're going in and, and making pizzas to, to keep that relationship um, strong. Um, we're just shy of 800 employees. Um, number's probably a little bit higher than on the slide because we continue to hire at our new location. One thing that um, is a point of pride for us is that every single manager in our locations from general manager, assistant manager, ship leaders, um, all of them started up as hourly crew members. Um, something that's how I began with the company um, 21 years ago. So in addition to those 26 locations, we have some support that we'd like to provide to the locations. We have a commissary that makes um, our dough fresh daily and they deliver it to all 26 locations. They will also do some centralized prep for us, but those are things like salad dressing um, that work better in big batches. The vast majority of our prep, whether it's grating cheese, making sauce, cutting up the vegetables is done in the location every single day. We have our customer service center. So we were early um, in the pizza game um, to have our own dedicated call center where we started taking calls for those deliveries. It started out as one person um, writing, handwriting um, things on a Rolodex for our regular customers. Um, and it has evolved since then um, we shifted a few years ago, um, adding online ordering, adding an app. So we've actually moved to about 70% digital. Um, so those calls have gone way down. But what we've done is shifted the, the focus um, for the customer service center. So in addition to taking the calls and being there to help support customers, um, they do a lot of things to help us out such as triaging issues for stores so we know that there's a phone number that they can call where someone will pick up and help them if they have an issue they can help support office functions um, getting things out to stores they are responding to our um, any customer comments yelp pages etc they can monitor those and we've also shifted them to where they're actually helping with some centralized hiring where they'll review applications, screen applicants out, and then triage those out to locations um, to be interviewed at the store. Pagliacci Support Central is our fancy name for the office. And that's where we have our marketing, accounting, IT, um, and some store supervision. Um, the goal there is to support all of the stores. We're there to help make sure that they can do their job. Um, one thing to note, I, I talked about how all of our managers in our stores are promoted from within, started as crew members. We like to provide that career opportunity no matter where it is. So over 50% of our office staff, whether that's marketing, accounting, IT, um, started as hourly crew members in the locations. So it's helpful those that are serving the people out in the stores know the job of, of those people. Um, so there is a little bit less disconnect. Not listed here, but one of the things that I also think is really cool um, that we do is we have a dedicated facilities team that are on staff for Pagliacci. Their primary focus is preventative maintenance to help keep us up and running. Um, and that gives us a lot of peace of mind when there is an emergency, we know that someone is going to pick up the call. Um, that could, that's not something that we used to have. Um, you're kind of at the mercy of, of whatever, whoever you're calling to see if they're willing and able to come out and, and serve you. And um, Murphy's Law states that it's usually gonna be on a Friday night or a weekend and harder to get people to come out. A little bit about our mission and values. I won't go into a ton of detail here. You can see see the slides. Um, I don't want to enumerate everything, but I will call out our mission. 
Um, our mission is always delivering excellence. There's a play on pizza delivery there. Um, like I said, a little bit tongue in cheek. Um, this also brings to mind for me, it's a, a paraphrase a quote from um, Vince Lombardi, since we're in football playoff season. Um, you know, he, he once told his team, we're gonna aim for perfection and fail into excellence. And we have that mentality as well. We're, we're not gonna keep ourselves from trying to get to perfection, knowing that that might be a tall ask, but if we're, if we're really pushing the bar there, then our failure will be excellence. One core value that I'd like to highlight is Tyler to seek to improve. For me, this is a big part of why Baldridge has appealed to Pagliacci. We've always pushed to make ourselves better. And, you know, before, this ties into what I'll, I'll talk about in, in just a little bit, we were mostly looking at ourselves. Can we raise the bar on what we're doing? Um, this has opened our eyes to, hey, how are we doing overall? Uh, do we know if we're looking at things that are important? But to also just be around folks like you all on this call, that are also committed to improve and willing to share information has been awesome and, and something that resonates for us. We have something called excellence drivers. These kind of fit with, we, we tell our employees, right? Our mission is what we do, our core values is who we are, and our excellence drivers is how we do it. One that I wanna highlight here is community. Might be a little bit different for a pizza place. Um, to make community a big point of pride um, or focus. But for us in our area, it's really important. Our customers want to do business with a company that shares their values, to be a responsible business. Um, so we really push to be a part of our community. That can be a small thing. You know, last year we donated pizza to teachers and volunteers at every school that is in any of our delivery area school districts um, to thank people. Um, our company is very involved in different organizations that are working to solve the homeless crisis, homelessness crisis here in Seattle. Um, we want to be a good neighbor in the communities we're in. We worked a lot during COVID when we had um, businesses that were struggling. We would buy um, their products and give them away to our customers. So coffee shop, cupcake shop that all of a sudden had no customers, well, we can at least get their product out to, to our people. So it is important to us to find different ways to engage within the community, um, which also ties into the Baldur's criteria. John, yes. this is Margo. We have a question. Yeah. Uh, and the question is, you mentioned over 50% of the staff is promoted from within. Do you have a formal process to identify and develop candidates within the stores? We, for the office roles, we do not. Um, we do for all of the internal promotions within the operations. Um, with the office staff, it can just depend on whether it's something that we're able to train to. And usually what we will do is we'll identify people that are really good. And, and help train and mentor them into the job. Um, there are times where it does require, you know, some of the accounting jobs or IT may require that experience. So then we're winnowing out um, those that have those qualifications. Great, thank you. Yep. All right, so a little bit about innovation. Um, <clears throat> You know, it can be different to, to innovate in, in pizza, and I'll share a couple of the things that we're doing. So the um, picture of the pizza ovens there in the upper corner, and that's a shift that we're making. Um, we're on, this will be now the third different type of ovens that we've used in my time here at Pagliacci. I believe there was one other brand before I started. Um, but we cook on brick deck pizzas, um, or we cook our pizzas on brick deck, and that is to give that quality bake um, underneath the pizza. Well, it's a lot of work in our stores. Um, you don't, that is a unique oven to us. Um, it creates a lot of work, a lot of running around. And in some of our um, benchmarking and, and collaborating, we were talking with a pizza company that's based in Cincinnati. 
um, that we have some common link to and, and started. They came out and visited us and we came out and visited them and we saw these ovens that are actually, there's in, inside the oven is a conveyor that's built out of bricks that, um, that works. So we started testing those out and are now about to install them in our sixth store. So we're slowly rolling this out. It is, it is a process. But what we've learned is that these ovens are easier to run. We can have just about anybody do it in the store. Um, they improve our quality and consistency. Um, it can cut labor. We, we do need fewer people to help make the pizzas. Um, injuries have gone to, you know, we have um, frequent burns to now zero burns in those stores because they're not putting their arms in, in big ovens. Um, and uh, another, another piece is that we get pizzas out faster. Um, it's improved speed. So that's been, it's been a nice benefit to us. Um, some of our other innovation comes on our, what we call our um, sustainability quest. Our, our, our goal is to work towards becoming um, net zero or, or carbon neutral. Um, those are different pieces for carbon neutrals in theory easier. And then net zero is, I think, um, a, a nice goal, but maybe not achievable, um, kind of like perfection. But we have uh, e-bike delivery. So the gentleman you see there with the e-bike, that's a crew member who put in a suggestion we have um, through our LMS platform, a way for crew members to suggest ideas, give feedback. And Nate there suggested that in some of our dense areas, we might be better served by getting on e-bikes. So we started that. We have um, five e-bikes now delivering out of two of our locations um, to help reduce our footprint and offer um, a quote-unquote driver job to those that may not have a car. We also just bought our fourth company-owned electric vehicle. So we've started to do that to help reduce um, our footprint. So we have four locations that have an electric vehicle and then a driver can sign up to um, drive that. Our goal is to actually have that on the road all operating hours. Um, so we do actually push drivers to be there. Um, with that, we also track all of our deliveries that are made in electric vehicles. Some, some drivers have their own. And then the one that um, generates the most headline is the drone in the middle there. We have uh, an agreement with a company called Zipline to start delivering our pizzas via drone. Um, that looks like it will happen late this year or early um, next year, but something that's pretty exciting um, for us and for our customers. We have a couple sister companies here um, in the area. De Laurenti is a um, food and wine deli um, grocery store down in famous Pike Place Market. Macrina Bakery has several locations um, throughout Seattle, um, as well as doing a lot of retail business. What those help, right? And we do have some shared functions where marketing um, IT facilities will help out um, the different companies, but it also allows us to share expertise um, or um, information. Um, so we we know with Macrina and all their retail customers, um, we can get a little bit of a sense of what's going on in um, in the food business. So during COVID, we know what businesses are doing based off of what they are are not ordering. We also share space with Macrina. Um, they moved to a huge facility um, to make all of their product, and we were able to move our commissary down there as well. So we do have some shared ability. Um, they are also able to kind of follow along um, in our Baldrige journey and help improve their locations. Give you a little bit of an idea of how we compare to other pizza places. Um, the pie chart there on the, the left shows our competitive position here in the Seattle market. So we are the biggest single entity in, in the market. Um, we've got about 16% of the market share. Um, 
Domino's coming in second. Zeke's is another um, local chain here in in third. Um, and then <clears throat> we are a really busy um, company and we like to make a lot of pizzas in a short amount of time. The other graph, our average unit volume shows that. Um, we, from what we've found, um, is that we do more volume than all but one pizza company, um, Dion's, um, which is based out of New Mexico. So I grew up in New Mexico. I remember ordering Dion's once or twice in college. I would love to go back and make a connection. If there are any New Mexico folk on the call, um, hopefully you've been to Dion's um, and may be able to vouch for their, their quality and, and how busy they are. All right, I want to transition into our Baldridge journey. Um, you have a little bit of an idea of, of who we are. Um, so back in 2015, a colleague and I were offered the chance um, to fly out to the far side of Tennessee, um, take a class from some company that won some award. And we didn't know too much, but I was like, you know what? I'm all about development. I'll get on a plane and, and go check this out. We didn't really know what we were in for. Um, we flew out there, it takes, you gotta get on one of those really small planes to head out to Tri-Cities, Tennessee. Um, we we got there, um, we're bleary eyed in the morning, right? It's, their class starts at 8 a.m. Eastern time, not like today where it's 8 a.m. Pacific time. So while it's early for me, I'm, I'm able to function. Then we were bleary eyed and confused, but that company, PALS, um, they started talking to us about how they put people and processes together to become excellent. And it was really eye-opening to see what they were doing. You know, they were sharing their results, but they also took us into some of their stores and it was amazing. In all of that talk about their people and processes, they did kind of make a little bit of a side mention about that award that they had won, an award called Baldridge, um, but it wasn't front and center. So, my colleague and I, um, Aaron, we were hooked and we decided, hey, we gotta get more people out to hear um, what this company has. So we started making some treks out. So PALS um, was the first food service company to win the Baldridge Award. Um, and up until 2020, they were teaching ongoing classes that you could go out and and see how they did. So we took leadership, we took general managers, we brought them out here to get people that we couldn't, just to get our managers, our leaders on board with this idea of continual excellence and improving the processes. Um, we heard about one of their um, former students, Rudy's and Mighty Fine are owned by Canaan Management. They were the second food service company to win the Baldridge Award. And so we started asking if we could go visit them. And they said yes and, and helped. And so again, we took leadership and managers down there to see a different way of, of becoming excellent. Um, and we started to take lots of notes, right? Hey, what are the things that we can adopt? And this may be familiar to, to many folks, depending on where you're at in your journey, but Initially, it's just like, oh my gosh, this company is doing this cool thing. Can we do that cool thing? And we took a lot of things, including peer reviews, right? The way that we give our employees feedback has improved. Um, shift huddles is improving communication to our hourly crew members. Um, we have improved and changed the way that we inspect and the way that our managers are functioning based off of what we've learned um, at KNN. And then also use um, some roving managers that would go plug into all of the stores and support, but it aids their development to become better leaders. We have taken that and we have a couple roving managers that support our stores, but also helps their career development path. So eventually though, after taking all of these notes, we started to shift and, and ask ourselves, wait a minute, both PALS and KNN became excellent using the Baldrige framework, maybe let's start really digging into that ourselves. Um, let's, let's shift away from taking all the notes as the priority and 
let's look at the criteria and figure out who we are, how we can improve. So finally, in 2022, January 1, we submitted our light application to PENW to put our money where our mouth is. Um, and it's, it's a, um, if you haven't written an application yet, it is a process. Um, and we submitted it, you know, have that time where we're waiting for the examiners to go through. We got our feedback report, read it, made all of our notes. Um, and then we hosted a learning site visit in the fall and sat down with an amazing group of people that were really um, dedicated to helping reflect what they saw in our source and our application and give us that feedback. Um, we learned a lot. And if you have not applied um, in any way, I cannot recommend it enough. It is amazing um, to get that feedback, to be able to hear that. And um, as, as Matt said, um, it is, uh, while it may not be cheap, it is way cheaper than any kind of consultant, analyst, whatever, right? You have people that are there having that conversation and in just in that different way where they want you to improve, but they're not necessarily um, tied to telling you what you want to hear. Um, so that was that was a great experience. And um, with that is what kind of what I'll focus on the rest of, of the, the speeches, what our learning came from. Um, a lot of that centered around results and comparative data. Um, there's stuff all throughout, but today we'll, we'll kind of stick around there. Um, as you know, those link to category four, um, measurement analysis, knowledge management. So um, I'll share a little bit about how we deal with data and talk throughout um, where, where applicable some of the changes that we've made through our learning. So Luigi is our proprietary software. We quickly learned um, many years ago Doreen decided that she didn't want an out-of-the-box um, platform to run the business. So connected, there's plenty of software companies here in Seattle, and then realized we were paying them a lot and they were paying their software engineer not as much. So eventually we just hired him away and created our own operating system. So it has pros and cons um, with it. We it touches just about everything that we do and it is customizable. Um, so it's great. It gives us more data than we need. When we talked to um, Zipline about drone stuff, they said that in, in any industry, um, we gave them the most data to help them understand what we do and, and how they could help. Um, so there's a ton that, that we do. It can be limiting. We're, you know, we don't go as fast as if we had a software company, um, and we may not be as cutting edge, um, but it works. So we have, um, we have started to question and, and find things that we can do better elsewhere, um, and part of that does come through the Baldrige experience of making those deliberate questions of, hey, what do you, how do you decide what you do in house and what you do um, outside. Outside of Luigi, we have, um, like many companies, those measures that we're sharing on a regular basis. Um, one thing that I'll note here, um, our examiners had a question about it. Periodic um, doesn't mean just whenever we want. Um, we run the company on, on 13 four-week um, periods a year. So every four weeks, we, we kind of refresh, reset. So when it says periodic, that means every fourth week. Um, but we are, we do send dashboards out to managers and leadership daily to see how stores performed the night before. Um, it can build on each other so you can see patterns and trends. Um, we're reviewing our action plans. We're setting goals with managers quarterly, et cetera. This key measure um list is what matt calls his coma list um maybe a little bit of a, of a morbid way of looking at it but he he said hey <clears throat> i guess this came a few years ago where he's like hey if i were just to awake from a coma and want to know how the business is doing this is what i would ask you 
So we've kept this list. Now I anticipate that it will change this year and I'll talk a little bit about that. But um, there's some cool things here. Um, our crews stay almost two years, um, which is really, really good for industry. Um, you'll see that on a slide later. Uh, drivers stick around um, for about three years or, and one in four drivers have been with us 10 plus years. Um, well, another thing that I want to highlight, so there's the number that says 94%, that the cut off for um, space, but the question that we ask on our crew survey is, I would recommend Pagliacci as a great place to work. So this is one of our first learning points with um, comparative data and, and results and focus. When, and through our strategic planning process last year, um, we've kind of heard loud and clear from our feedback report like think about what measures are important to you um, look at comparative data so when we did our leadership retreat as part of our, our strategic planning process we were each assigned to identify a company and learn about it and come report and we saw some comparisons in similar um, similar question with um, other companies the highest that we found um was chipotle a well-regarded um, business and they were putting on their website hey, over 60 percent of our employees say that they would recommend um chipotle as a great place to work and we had been beating ourselves up over that last six percent why can't we get from 94 to 95 96 we should be at 100 percent and we realized that we're probably not going to get to 100 percent and and that return on the investment of that focus isn't right so we haven't worried as much about that six percent anymore um and we're also changing um that metric to employee net promoter score um so if you're familiar with net promoter score it's similarly just asking your employees on that one to ten scale if they would recommend um we like that because I think that'll give us a, a better answer, but it's also going to be something that's more comparable across industries. So <clears throat> if you all read the um, promotional slide for the presentation, um, I mentioned how when we wrote our application, we did the tried and true applicant thing saying, hey, it's really hard to find comparative data. We don't have much, so forgive us. And the examining team, as each examining team does, says, yeah, not good enough. Um, go find some. And so we, we've we accepted that challenge and we've had some success. So here are things that have started to work for us. Um, trade publications have a lot of information that help us find the relative position. So average unit volume um, is one of those metrics that we've found um, to help us compare. Um, we switched our payroll to a company called Paylocity. Within that, that opens up a lot of different reports so we can compare within our industry and across industries to help see where our turnover, et cetera, rank. Um, we can connect with lots of other companies, um, whether that's the pizza company out in Cincinnati or local companies here that we have relationships with. Not all of that information may not be able to be something that we could put in an application, but it certainly helps us inform um, decisions and understand what how things are going here or with pizza companies elsewhere. Uh, industry organizations have lots of data. We've learned that the price um, to get data is to share data, and we're starting to be more okay with that. Certainly it helps when it is kind of that anonymous aggregated data but it still helps us understand where we're at. I was um, serving on a board of a nonprofit, and with that, there was a connection to a gentleman at Seattle Public Library who helps businesses, and I had a side conversation, I said, hey, could you help us out? And he's like, absolutely. And we got on a Zoom call, and he showed me um, a ton of different um, resources through a few databases that we could we could access and the price for that is a library card um, which most people have or can get very very easily um, so something didn't even think about um, Baldridge winners 
we utilize the um, website where you can look up past winners or just connecting with them in person. Um, a new marketing partner HubSpot also affords us some data that we're, we're able to compare. We've worked on increasing our transparency, so we show our managers more information. We're having more discussions um, about data, about how we're doing, um, and that helps get us aligned. Um, but it also helps with those discussions with more people we can learn um, and they can understand where we're at and how to help the business. We work on sharing our best practices. Um, we'll test you know, through our, our PDCA, um, test something in one to three stores, depending on how it is. So ovens, right, we're just gonna buy in one and, and check it out. Um, we'll adjust, we'll share those learnings. We have manager retreats where we'll have managers who are experts um, lead panels or group discussions, and that helps um, everyone understand the best known practices or through those discussions, maybe develop new things that we can try. Um, we're very, very involved in the stores. Our leadership is there, whether that's um, <clears throat> kind of our, our regional or district managers, they don't have offices. They're out in the stores all of the time, but that goes even above, right? I'm out in the stores constantly. My boss is there, Matt, the owner is out there. And what this helps is it puts us right next to the people who are closest to the problem and therefore closest to the solution. So learning can happen on both ends where we're able to share what we know and what we have we have oh, through our years of expertise, um, but also they can keep us current and, and help us learn more so we're continually improving. And then we use SharePoint for reference materials um, just to be able to have um, things that are written down. We learn that pretty quickly. If it's not written down, even if you've told people, um, it doesn't, doesn't exist. Results is a little bit twofold. I do have some slides to share um, that, that show some of our results and, and how we've learned. But um, it's also results from the site visit. and some of the things that I want to share related to that are um, we learned that as a company, we need to be very deliberate about choosing to focus on the results that matter. Um, so as an example, for years, we've pointed to, looked at, um, obsessed over our on-time percentage, how many of our deliveries are on time. And frankly, it's gotten worse um over time when i started you know we were giving managers goals that were hey we want you to be 95 percent on time now those goals are at 85 percent on time um and we've we still measure it and it's still somewhat important but it isn't that on that pedestal that it was because as it got worse things didn't change for the company right sales are still going up we didn't stop everything to figure out the problem. So kind of how we talked about, we, we didn't, um, we stopped putting our efforts into getting that 6% of employees that, that didn't say um, we're a great place to work. The return on investment on focusing on, on the on-time percentage wasn't there, right? What's more important to us is quote, how, how quickly can we get it in there? And as long as we're not crazy late, we're probably gonna be okay um is what we've learned so we're trying to focus on the right measures we're trying to focus on the impact of decisions that will impact those we like to challenge ourselves and find solutions out of some competing um priorities An example this year we are pushing our stores to improve service but we're also really pushing them on controlling the cost of the business and within that, there's conflict because an easy way to give service is to have more people around, but that doesn't help with the cost of the business. So how can we find solutions in that? So with that, we are trying to become more aware and more vigilant about keeping an eye on what that one change might do to different things, right? So if our managers are super focused on gross margin this year and it starts to impact our inspection our crew development our 
complaints, well, then maybe we're not doing it right. So we've really had to balance that. Um, we need to have context, which is where the comparative data helps. We have a lot of data. We don't always know what it means and whether that's good or bad. So looking externally to figure out helps give us that reference. Uh, another thing that we did that was super helpful is we got all of our leaders um, together and we went through category seven and we just had a series of meetings and said, here are the questions, what could or should we have? Um, you know, we'd already submitted an application, but that doesn't mean that what we included in the results, just because you have it, doesn't mean it's important or that you can share. And that started to help us get um, get a clear focus on what we should and could be measuring, um, also help to get more people on board with the framework and, and knowledgeable. So um, I'm going to quickly go through so we have time for questions. Um, but we have um, some results for customer experience. Um, one thing that I kind of like to joke about with this slide, I'll get it fixed eventually, but um, as a, an examiner, I was told to pay attention to um, applicants who will manipulate their scale to make things look better. Um, we kind of manipulate our scale to make things look worse. So it looks like there's a lot of variation. Our food quality rating is pretty much set around nine out of 10, um, which we're pretty proud of. Similar, we get ratings on our customer service um, and our ordering experience. They all are basically nine out of 10. How do some of the things compare? So we looked at our net promoter score. Um, we will do an annual customer survey where we email blast. Um, we started doing a couple um, small segmented surveys that came with customer receipts. So you can see the, the varying results for Pagliacci over a couple of years there. Um, and then some comparisons um, that we see. So certainly well above a lot of big names in the industry um, and right on there with Chick-fil-A, in and out who um, are really good companies with an amazing following. So we feel pretty good about where our net promoter score is at, though do want to push above those and start playing with um, any leaders in, in any kind of field. Crew numbers, I'm not gonna dwell on here. We don't have a ton of comparisons. I'll, I'll talk about our employee net promoter score later, but just reinforce to us that we have um, made a culture where we are a good employer and people wanna be around. Similar, some numbers from the manager survey um, that, that show things. One thing that we've found that, that's not pictured, but I'm super proud of, our average GM tenure is 13.3 years. So anywhere our GMs, their average of being around is over 13 years. Um, we've benchmarked that and within the area, um, our competitors have 1.4 years. So we're over 10 times the, the tenure in our general managers, which says a lot about us as a company, but also the ability to have um, strong people. 2023, our employee net promoter score was 47. So uh, a benchmark, um, average benchmark from um, companies on comparably.com, we found um, is 21. So, some other companies, uh, McDonald's actually has a negative employee net promoter score, negative 23. Chipotle is at 26. Starbucks is at seven. in and out is 33, pretty close. Chick-fil-A um, looked to be the, the standard bearer there at 61. So we're um, continuing to try to push that up, but it also helps us to see where we compare versus the old, um, I would recommend, um, policy. So we expect this to go up. We're going to change our crew survey and, and get this from um, more of our employees. The This score is based off of a select number of surveys that we do ongoing throughout the year for different types of, of employees, but not all of them. Um, and then final result that it show, um, tenure and turnover. So you can see people stick around. Um, we do segment out by all of the different positions. Um, having people around um, 
certainly helps and, and speaks to that longevity. We are working to find comparisons where we can. Um, we won't be able to find on, on everything, but certainly uh, I shared, right, our, our general managers um, is one point of pride. And then you can see turnover um, versus industry. Um, we are very strong um, there. Updated, um, I just looked at, I pulled up last year what we could find. Our turnover actually lowered at 56%. The benchmark is 83 for the industry. So there, there have been some changes, but we feel like we've been, been doing well. Um, so I think, you know, in, in final closing, um, what's been important to us is to be able to look at these results and help make those informed decisions um, about what is truly important and finding those comparisons to provide context. Hopefully, um, what I have shared has been a little bit beneficial, informational, um, or at the very least made you hungry for some pizza. You can come out um, and visit us anytime. I'd be happy to buy you a slice and, and catch up about things Baldridge. Um, and I'll just thanks for, for being here and attending and see if there's any questions I can answer. Okay, so John, we, we have a comment first, and then uh, I think we have a couple comments. Um, one is from Gail in New Mexico to let you know, yes, we order from Dion's a couple times a week. And they always, it's the first place they go when they get back from a trip. So um, <laughs> you got some, some shout outs from New Mexico. Right. Um, and then um, Michael has a comment here. It says, impressing, impressive, measuring the results that matter indicates an in-depth understanding of the business and their customers, balancing the areas in their mission. Um, so that's two, two comments for you. And I, I, I'm, I'm a proponent of focus on the right measures, don't measure everything. So I think there's a lot of, of people that are, are supporting that approach. Um, if anyone has a question, again, you can type it in the control panel. And um, while we're waiting to see if there's any questions, I, I personally have a question, John. I noticed on the turnover slide that during COVID, you could see that turnover against the industry actually got worse, but you got better. <laughs> um, do you know Do you know why that happened? Or did you put some things in place during that kind of volatile time? Um, what, what really helped us, I think that the most of it is we were set up to um, really be in the position to do the things that that folks needed at that time right our our business is really centered or was um in going into 2020 we had big catering business big delivery business lots of dine-in lots of pickup well as soon as COVID hit we lost catering we lost the dine-in um but we still had the delivery and the pickup so we were able to keep people right in the history of Pagliacci we have not had to lay anybody off um, so we're able to keep jobs and while we, we got scared initially and pumped the brakes um, and said you know don't hire anybody and then quickly learned that we needed to hire we actually um, one piece of learning that I thought was was clever is managers expressed concern about training new people and the amount of time um, so we just picked up the phone and and called our last 10 to 15 people that had left each store had the manager reach out and see if they were in a spot where they needed a job. So we were able to actually bring people back um, that were fully trained and, and have um, get back into the job. That's terrific. Thank you. Well, I think that's all our questions. Um, thank you so much, John. Um, you, you shared a, a really impressive story and we are thankful that you're sharing your best practices. And um, I'm sure that most of the folks on the, the um, webinar today are not from the pizza industry, but they could certainly apply um, your, your um, best practices to, to any type of industry. So thank you for sharing. Thank you. Okay, so thanks again, everyone, for joining us. Um, I would like to share with you um, our next um, webinar. And um, that will be on February 15th. Um, and we have Mara Bryant from Adventist um, Health White Memorial, which is a, a Baldridge recipient, and Stephen Riley. And they are gonna talk about ideation to re realization, accelerating 
mission with artificial intelligence, which is an area that is moving so quickly nowadays and changing. Um, and so I think that's going to be a really great um, webinar. Um, here's the link at the bottom, and we'll send this, this out to everyone um, to register for that webinar. I'd like to thank all of you for joining us today. Um, if you are interested in starting your Baldridge journey and you haven't started yet, um, this is the contact information for um, the seven programs that support um, this, this webinar. So reach out to the appropriate program to get started. If you're from a state that's not listed here, um, you can reach out to me and I can connect you with the appropriate person. But all of, all of our states, um, have a state or regional program that you can work with to get started on your Ballbridge journey. So again, thank you for joining us. Um, thank you to John for sharing their best practices and for Theron for hooking us up with John. And we will see you next month. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, everyone.